All right, so defining and using procedures. Procedures is the assembly word that we use for what we commonly call functions. In our high level languages, we have been using functions to divide a much larger, more complicated program. So we can do the same thing in assembly, okay? But here it's, they're called procedures. There are different things that we need to create a procedure. So we have here an example. This is a procedure that can return items and it can receive also parameters, okay? So important, right? Whenever we're creating a procedure, this is just part of good documentation. Uh, let the users know, or not users, but let your other programmers know what it is that this procedure is receiving, registers, for example, and what it's returning, um, the sum of numbers, for example, and it returns it in your register EAX, for example, okay? And any specific requirements that it may need. So here we have an example of a procedure that adds number. So this is the name uh, sum off. That's the name of the procedure. Notice that it's followed by the PROC proc. This is a directive, by the way. This is not an instruction. Okay. So PROC and the keyword or ENDP, both of those are directives. And you see them also with the procedure main. It says main proc and main end p, right? So those two are directives that are letting you know something is happening. Uh, here, very simple, this procedure. Notice that it tells you that by default is receiving the following three registers, EAX, EDX, and ECX, all right? And it will return EAX, which will hold the sum of all the items. It doesn't require anything in particular. So all it does is adding the three registers. And because the last one used that holds all the information is EAX, well, it's returning that. It ends with the sum of and then the directive. So to call this procedure, we have an instruction called call, all right? So again, PROC and ENDP are directives, but CALL and in turn RET for return, those are instructions, okay? So CALL is an instruction that pretty much when that is happening, it pushes the address of the next instruction in your program onto the stack. All right, it copies that into what we call our IEP, right? Now, the, the pointer register. And once we are done in the procedure that was called and we hit the RET, the return, what this one does is that it pops the stack so that it can find that address where it's supposed to go to next, okay? So here, notice that we have a program, this is a main procedure, and it also it's also showing us, by the way, these are the instructions uh, from your object code. So here we have a call to your procedure called myself, okay? My subtraction. So this call, C-A-L-L, -L, what it does is that it stores this <clears throat> offset of this, uh, of this instruction. By the way, the move EAX comma EBX, EAX and EBX, they have their own offsets where to find the location where you can find the values inside EAX and EBX. MOV 
also has its own offset, okay? In this case, it takes, as an example, five locations, right? In order to find the location of your entire instruction. And yes, EAX will have its own offset and EBX will have its own offset. But right now, we're, we're, the offset we're worried about is the location of the entire instruction, okay? So once we make this call, it stores that uh, 025, okay? And it jumps from here to finding uh, where you have your procedure MySub. Now, the next instruction of MySub happens to be at location 040, okay? So it does whatever it needs to do in this procedure. Then it catches the RET instruction, the RET, the return instruction. And that return instruction will pop the stack and it'll find the 25. So instead of going to the 20, it goes to the 25. So now it's ready to do the next instruction, okay? So uh, that is how your call and your return instructions function and how you call a procedure in assembly. So here is a, a visual example of what's happening, all right? So the call instruction pushes that address of the next instruction within main into your ESP register. Then we load the address of where the procedure is found at location 040 into your uh, pointer register. Whatever happens at this location, right? It does its subtraction or whatever it is doing. And then once we get to red, it pops at 25. At 25 is placed into your IEP because we need to get back to the 25, okay? And then it continues from then on to the next location for your, whichever instruction is happening. Here we don't have another instruction, but assuming that there's another instruction right here. We also have the possibility of having nested procedures, just like in your, your high level language, you can have nested uh, functions. We can also have nested procedures in assembly. Uh, a nested procedure in assembly is when one procedure calls a, a next procedure before the original has finished. For example, here we have procedure main that is calling procedure sub one. And before we reach the end of procedure sub one, this one is calling procedure sub two and so on and so forth. So notice that none of them have really finished, but they're calling another procedure. So this is a nested procedure call. Another set of terms that you will use uh, is what is a local a label and a global variable. So this is similar to the idea of your local and global variables, except that these do not store uh, items, values inside of them. They're simply locations. We have seen labels for when we're using our, our loops, our LOOP instruction. So we're used to see, for example, the one that says sub two proc, so here we're having label L2, and we have an instruction that tells us to jump to label L1. Well, notice that this allows us to go to label L1 because label L1 is what we call a global label. And the reason that this is a global label is because of the syntax. Notice that L1 is preceded by two columns, but L2 has only one set of columns. So from main, we're asking to jump to L2, which provides an error because L2 is not visible within main. However, L1, because it says right here that it's global because it's got two columns, we can see it from anywhere. So we can have a, another procedure. We could have a procedure calculate or a procedure cube. And if that procedure calls L1, it can jump outside of its own procedure and go all the way to main, for example, but not the other way around. 
Now, if we wanted to do something like this and we wanted to jump to this procedure, then we would have to make L2 also a global variable. But uh, in a case like this, it's better just to call uh, procedure sub two and you know it would be simpler like that. Procedures can also receive parameters. And one thing about procedures that we wanna keep in mind that we wanna make a procedure as general as possible so that we can reuse it throughout our program. Parameters is one way to make procedures more flexible as, as our author says. So we have an example of the following program and we're concentrating only on the procedure that adds particular numbers. So this procedure is array sum, so it's gonna add numbers. This is a subroutine. Notice what it's doing. So we we already know what this does. We're simply setting our ESI to zero and our EAX to zero. So ESI setting it to zero. That means that instead of using indirect addressing, what we're using here is uh, direct addressing using your subscripts. Okay. So notice that here we're using my array sub ESI. So we're saying my array sub zero, and then it's gonna to go to my array sub four, my array sub eight, so on and so forth. So here is looping, is adding all the numbers in the array, assuming that in main, all of those numbers were passed along, right? Also ESI, EAX probably, but there is a, a small problem here, is that these program, is specifically using the keyword my array. So that means that if you had uh, this program and you needed to add an array of test scores and an array of numbers and an array of uh, rain inches and temperature, so on and so forth, we wouldn't be able to use this procedure for all of them because this is very specific. So here, the fact that we're calling my array, that means that we must always use my array no matter what. So it is not a very flexible procedure. So the best way to do this is simply uh, making it a little bit more generic. So notice the difference of this procedure and the first one. So here we're having procedure array sum. Now we are receiving before we're coming in ESI and ECX as well as we know we're gonna be using EAX, okay? So instead of initializing everything here, it's been done before, before we even arrive to the procedure. Now, yes, we can initialize or reinitialize your EAX to zero in case EAX had some other number before. And we are, this doesn't change, but we are simply saying add your offset, what's inside of that offset, the ESI or sub zero. But notice that we are omitting the name of the array. The, array, the name of the array is not there, okay? but we know that ESI before was pointing to a specific place, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and um, move that number into EAX and then continue to add them until we're done. And then we simply return that value in EAX. So this is a little bit more generic and it allows us to reuse any array as long as it's, of course, an array of uh, 32 bits. Here, we have uh, the introduction of the uses operator, which tells us what it is, the registers that this particular procedure will use. So we have array sum, which is a procedure that uses ESI and ECX. All right, then of course the, the next thing happens, okay? You can go ahead and start moving the zero into EAX and then of course you have your loop. So what the uses operator does is that it pretty much cuts the 
time of having to push any registers uh, before we start working in the subcode in the procedure. And then of course it also pops them at the end. Works the same way as, as uh, if you were using push and pop. So you can choose either or, okay? So when shouldn't we push a register uh, into the stack? Well, depends. For example, uh, EAX in this program, we do not want to push EAX into the stack because if we push EAX into the stack uh, and let's say we pop it, right? Let's say we're coming in from main and main used EAX for whatever reason, it did a different addition in main and then you push that into the stack. Then you come into the procedure, you, you are reusing EAX and it gives you a sum of uh, 50 hex. So when you return to your main program, you pop EAX, well, if you had the 50 hex in there, popping the, your, your register will replace whatever was in EAX before, so you would lose the addition value. So, you know, just uh, before you're, you're pushing or popping variables, if you're going to be doing any of, in any of that, then just keep in mind that uh, some variables are better not taped into the stack. Again, it depends. If you're calling a procedure that is calling another procedure that is looping, then you do want to store your ECX value into the stack because you have multiple loops happening. You know, that's, that's, that's one way when you may want to push a register versus not. So, depends on the program. But just keep in mind that that can happen. 